Hey, I want to show you how to use Stage Timer IO together with the Stream Deck and BitFocus Companion. I have a test setup right here with Stage Timer IO running, and I connected a Raspberry Pi with a screen, so I can show the timer full screen here. And we have our um, Stream Deck setup with buttons to remote control Stage Timer here. For example. I can uh, start, and you should see it in the background, starting, start and stop the timer. I can do uh, actions like uh, resetting it back to the uh, 10 minute mark. I can add um, and remove minutes from the timer. I can I could black out um, the screen. I can flash the time and, for example, um, show a message that I have pre-programmed. So how do we do this? When you are on the controller page of StageTime.io, you have a API pop-up. It shows your room ID, which is the same as in your browser uh, address bar, as well as an API key. If there's no API key, there will be a button to generate one. With these two information, we can address the API and we see how this works in the docu on the documentation page. So this will pre-fill the code snippets that you see here with the right information so you can simply copy paste them over. The first thing you want to do is create a start and stop button. As you can see, you have several options available in this API. Uh, most of them only uh, are differed by this um, small change in words. And we have here a start command, a stop command and a toggle command, toggle being switching between start and stop. Let's create a start and stop button. I will copy this code snippet here and then move over to the companion administration. You can see here my test setup. Let's open a new page and start fresh. Um, first, I will add a regular button. Let's call it start. And here under the press actions section, I'm gonna um, add a command called run shell path. Run shell path allows me to paste this uh, command, this console command into this path field here, just like it is. And now the button should already work. So if I switch pages to the second page, you can see our new button here. When I press it, the timer should start running. Let's set the stop button in a similar manner. Let's go back to the documentations page and copy the stop command. Um, add another regular button, Let's call it stop. And um, we go to um, the run shell path uh, command here under press actions and paste this uh, console command and it now shows up on my stream deck and with that I can start the timer and then stop it again. Next I want to show you a more complex button with a toggle state. For that we are taking the blackout command. Blackout will just uh, switch the uh, screen to black and then when you press it again uh, it will switch it back to the timer. So we copy this command, add a new button. I'm calling it uh, black well, let's call it small letter so it all fits into one line, calling it black. And here we are uh, activating the latch toggle option. Under the latch action, let's again uh, call the run shell path and uh, paste our command. But under the uh, for the unlatch action, we do the same thing. So we do the run shell option and just pa paste the same command because it's a, it's a command that toggles anyway. Um, and to uh, add a visual highlight here, uh, let's make the background change of the button so we can have a, a op uh, optical feedback. Um, so when you push it one time, let's set it to a red background and when you change it another time, then let's change it back to a black background. Now on our uh, Stream Deck page, you can see a the black button. If I push it, it will black out the screen behind me and uh, the button will turn red. If I push it again, a screen will come back and the button is turned back to, to black. Then I want to show you two more commands. First is the so-called a tweak command. With the tweak command, you can add or subtract a time from a running or like stop timer on the go. So as you can see in this uh, command section here, it's a bit longer. There's this uh, amount uh, plus 10 minutes payload. This is the one that we are going to change. So for example, we don't want to have 10 minutes. We want to have just five minutes. We want to add or subtract five minutes. So we copy 
uh, this code snippet here. Let's add another button. We call it plus five minutes. And as the um, action, we can call a run shell path and paste it in. But instead of leaving it like it is, uh, this time we are going to change the plus 10 minutes to plus five. Um, I'm going to copy this button. And here I will change it to minus five minutes here as well as in the code, uh, in the command path. With that change, I have these two buttons on my uh, timer. And when I click on plus five minutes, it should add five minutes to the time behind me. When I click uh, minus, it should subtract them again. And for the last step, we are going to look how to target individual elements of our timer. Going back to the controller page, you can see that there's not just one timer, there's actually a quite a number of timers as well as three prepared messages. Let's say this wrap up message here, I want to have at my fingertip. Whenever a speaker goes over time, I want to be able to just um, flash this one on the screen from directly from my stream deck. Um, for this, we scroll down to the um, individual message endpoint. What you see here is that we can target individual messages in this list. And here, as you can see, I can target individual messages. Um, not only do I provide a room ID here, but I also have this message and then a variable index option. And this index is zero based, meaning the first element is a zero and the second is a one and the third is a two. So on our controller, we want to uh, target the, um, yeah, you see here message zero. So we want to target our third element, which has index two. It has nothing to do with this name, by the way, this is uh, just a random name. Um, so I'm going to copy this, not the show, not the hide, I'm going to copy the toggle command because I want to toggle um, the message on and off on the click of this button to create a new button. I'm calling it um, a wrap up. And here we add this command into the path. Now, what is important is that we want to change the index. So I will, um, in this uh, command field, change the zero. Let me go to documentation to show it a bit better. I will change this zero here to a two to target a third message. Target to two. And now it should work that when I click this uh, wrap up button down here, it should actually show the message on the screen. In the timer section, there's an easy way to find those indexes. You can open the settings pop up and down here in the corner, there's the index shown. So if you want to target a timer that's all the way at the end, for example, um, you can just open the settings pop up and it will show you this is index six. And then you can, um, with the documentation, you could, for example, say, um, I will take this start command and I will say timer six instead of zero uh, start and it will start exactly that timer and you can put it um, on a button on your stream deck. So this should help you if you want to use StageTimer.io and you are a great Stream Deck and Companion fan.